but started as 32, went to 16, and now the last eight move forward to the quarterfinals from the round two of the May Young Classic. We're here to talk about round two and all of the excitement that was included. Yes. We're going to go through results first. We had Tony Storm defeat Hiroyu Matsumoto with a bridging jackknife pin. Rhea Ripley defeated Casey Catanzaro with a riptide. Uh, Lacey Lane defeated Tainara Conti with a crucifix powerbomb. Miko Setamora defeated Mercedes Martinez with a scorpion kick. Io Shirai defeated Ziuxis with a moonsault. Deanna Perrazzo defeated Zia Lee with the Rings of Saturn. Tegan Knox defeated Nicole Matthews with that shiniest wizard. And Mia Yim defeated Caitlyn with an E-bar. So, it's going to be a lot easier to talk about what we liked, what we loved, any of that stuff. So, Kevin Hawk, what was your favorite match of round two? My favorite match of round two? Um, I'd be lying if I said it was anything other than Mercedes Martinez versus Miko Zetamora. Because you were fucking hyped for that. I was hyped for that match when they both advanced. Um, I was hyped for that match when I noticed that they were in the same cot bracket together. Yeah. That, like, that was a possibility. Um, you know... It's sad to see one of them have to go before the quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, but man, it was a fantastic match and physical. As well. uh, you know, they had a like they had by about the three quarter marks. They had most of the people at Full Sail standing watching. Oh, them. absolutely. I th- I think everyone really knew what to expect going into a match like this. With, you know, well, both, you, you have, both of their tenures, like, they are both well-respected within yeah, women's wrestling. Yeah, I mean, Mercedes Martinez, definitely, I would consider a current, you know, legend who's still in the mix of things in the U.S., especially farther on the eastern side. Right. Um, Miko Satomura, by far, definitely a legend who's still, you know, going on in Japan. Yeah. Um, you know, so you have people with, you know, those legendary things. They're two of the most experienced, I think, two of the oldest women. They might be the two oldest oh, women abso- in the tournament. I, I absolutely believe they're uh, the yeah, oldest I think Mercedes is 37 and Miko is 38, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Which I think, yeah, I think puts them, like, at the top. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think anyone's... I don't think anyone's even close. I think mo- most of the women are early 30s, late 20s at this yeah. point. And a lot of them are way younger than that, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, the match was great. The experience of both of them showed. Um, the fact that, you know, like, both of them kicked out of or, you know, got out of the respective finishes from the first round matches, which made everybody go, oh. <laughs> um Oh, it was just so good. Uh, good enough that good. I'm probably just going to go back and watch it again later. Why not? Because it was fucking awesome. It's worth it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, then here's what I'd say. is I would have put the first set of matches on episode six. Yes, I agree. Because that match, you know, I'm not taking anything away from the fact that Mia Yim versus Caitlyn was really good. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely think that should have been the round two main event. I, I, I fully agree. Um, what, what, what's your favorite match? I'm actually also going to go with a match from episode 5. That was my favorite, Rhea Ripley versus Casey Catanzaro. Uh, Rhea, you know, Rhea was in a situation where she was not only going at someone smaller than her, which is already kind of like, okay, Rhea's just going to fucking kill this woman, but it's also a woman that eliminated her tag team partner from yeah. the tournament. But then... Again, Casey playing a very good underdog and using even more of her, like, uh, Ultimate Ninja Warrior, American Ninja Warrior, whatever you call it. Ultimate Warrior Ninjas. Flying karate kicks. Just, like, her... She has... I love the way she uses the the top rope like a gymnast bar. And yeah. goes into like those Herc and Ranas and stuff. Like she has some amazing offense, and it's really cool to see her go and use utilize everything in the ring to be able to do that. There was only real one flub when she tried she tried to do that springboard, and she kind of messed up. But they quickly recovered. Like Rhea immediately jumped on her, and then you know they were able to reset. And then Casey was able to still hit the move. Um, 
and it really didn't like it didn't mess up the match. The you know the crowd was still loving the match, and then I just I'm really excited to see Rhea move forward just because she was one of my favorites last year. I'm excited to see her on TV more, and I'm excited to see where she goes in the tournament just in general. Yeah, and now just we check her out on NXT UK because that's yeah, coming up. Exactly. Yeah. Jeez, we're gonna have to talk about that this week. Um, and then uh, I th- I think you know Rhea. I was gonna say something and I fucking lost it. I just really I like Rhea. Rhea is awesome. Um, I, no, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm Rhea, about, oh, Rhea is like Rhea's. You know, she's not the biggest that's been in the tournament, but we now have one of those larger women moving forward. Yeah. In the tournament, so we have we have that monster going into the quarterfinals, which yeah. is what we we're talking about having Vanessa Craven uh, and Rana Gonzalez both being yeah. taken out in the first round. Yeah, I don't think she's quite as big as either of them, but no. But she's definitely the powerhouse. She's, she's definitely the biggest one going into the next round. Yeah, I, w- I would say her her and Miko are probably the biggest of the final eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. I, I liked the match a lot as well. Uh, I'm I'm kind of afraid that Casey Catanzaro is going to be a bit of a one-dimensional wrestler when it comes to get maybe potentially getting TV time if she comes up to NXT and does so. stuff. You know, it's... Cool, I think, but it didn't really seem she had that much to offer other than you you know doing the cool things which I mean they're they are fun to watch yeah but that's gonna be one of those things where it's like you keep doing that over and over again we're gonna keep being like okay what's right. next like you're gonna have to keep upping your game and that's when it starts getting dangerous yeah uh, which, which it is doesn't why, tell a good story which it's is like, why hopefully she just works on a lot of her in-ring stuff because she's she's a good wrestler as well she just you know she has those little tricks I yeah I, I agree in the WWE way of things there's a chance that she could just get stuck on her tricks yeah and that could that could spell disaster for character or for personal well-being um who in particular did you did, did you like who 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 stood out from you from, know from the, I, the, I, the sweet 16 i would say the same i think i said the same thing for the first round i just say caitlin yeah the fact that she did so like she, okay she had kavita devi in mm-hmm. the first round so not another you know someone who's not the most experienced wrestler versus another person who's fairly new to wrestling yeah, uh, in Kavita Kavita Devi, um, so you know, it was awesome and cool that Caitlyn looked good and Kavita put her over really well. Um, I kind of expected Caitlyn to just totally kind of get overshadowed by Miriam, not intentionally, not like Mia's trying to make her look bad. Yeah, but like, okay, we have one of the most well traveled, well versed indie vet women going against. Caitlyn, who's been gone for four years and wasn't that strong to begin with. Yeah. Um, but Caitlyn's really upped her game, and there were times where I thought maybe she was actually going to advance to the next round, and the more the match went on, the more I was like, okay, I don't think I would actually be upset if she advances to the next round. That was the most interesting part of that match, is that at the end, people were genuinely upset that Caitlyn didn't go forward, and I think if they hadn't had that respectful hug at the end... People might have booed Mia Yim out of the building at that because they weren't. Yeah. They were actually unhappy to see Caitlyn go, and there was a big "Thank you, Caitlyn" chant. Yeah. So like, Caitlyn was I'm, like, I'm hoping she gets booked and does something at Evolution. Oh, absolutely. Caitlyn felt like like for the comparing to other tournaments they've done, she was like the Cedric Alexander. Yeah. Because people were losing their mind for Cedric in the Cruiserweight Classic. And you know, in the same way, yeah, Caitlin, Caitlin had a fantastic showing. Um, man, I don't think I could. I don't think I could disagree with that. I think, I mean, Zia Lee again really impressed me. Her and Deanna had a great match. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just, I think she got a lot closer. Like. Same same thing as Caitlyn. She got a lot closer to winning that match against Santa oh, yeah. Plaza than I expected her to ever get yeah. to. Yeah, and and it and it was great. And I, I you know and 
she she had a good short match with Karen Q in the first round. That people went ape shit over. Exactly. And so I was excited to see what she was able to do against someone as technically versed as Deanna. And I thought she does a really good job of, of keeping pace with Deanna. And she's spicy. <laughs> I mean, the match was great, but I kind of lost my shit when she had Diana in the corner and, like, literally just yelled. I Like, this is, like, late in the match, too, yeah. where they're both exhausted. And, like, the, this would be the place for, like, the insult or, like, just, a like, a yell in general. But the fact that she just, like, yelled, I'm spicy. It's it's her, any, I just, it's oh, her I inner like, curry man. I, I, I kind of <laughs> lost my shit a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, Caitlyn, absolutely, but I'll, I'll give another nod to uh to Zia Lee. Um we won't say that in the third round cuz they're both eliminated now. So we'll yeah. have, we'll have someone else to talk about in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Yeah, I I think the the next video is going to be a lot more dissecting yes. because there's going to be far fewer people to talk about. Exactly. Um especially when the semis come around. Yeah. Uh, uh all right. So was there was there anything that you disliked from the second round? Um, I don't know. Maybe the Lacey Lane Tanara Conti match. It was, was short. It was short for my taste. Uh, considering especially because like all the other matches were like really dynamic in like character progression and like comebacks and you know a lot of back and forth and a lot of like you know so maybe it's it was maybe it was a little okay because it broke up. The yeah. pacing of the show. Yeah. But at the same time, it was, like, really, really surprising. Especially because, for me, I was expecting more out of Tainara Kanchi for this tournament. Her being the only person in the tournament who won a televised qualifying match. That's true. Which was kind of weird because they did the qualifying match after the brackets were announced. So... Kind of ruined the surprise. Um, yeah, and, it, like... Looking at and, it, like the other matches, the, finish, it was, the other matches that were around it, it was one of those things. It's like, man, having a short match between those two probably was a benefit because they could keep, you know, they could keep a quick pace. But they had a lot of talent they had to really show up against. I mean, they were the semi-main to Mika versus Mercedes. Yeah, and then for me, it was just the the ending was very, very. Poorly telegraphed. Yes. Because yes, Tainara went for her cool little judo inverted gunslinger. Yeah. Uh, but then it was very slowly countered into the crucifix powerbomb. Yeah. Yeah, it di- didn't quite work as well as it did with uh, Vanessa Craven. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, not a knock to either of them, but, you know, I think they got the short straw, short end of the stick... They did the least amount to impress me. Um, you know, I just kind of wish there was a little bit more from them. Yeah. Um, I won't say anything really disappointed me. I, I kind of felt a similar feeling that I had from round one from both Hiroyo and Zeuxis. Zeuxis definitely upped it. Uh, Hiroyo, I think I was more into the match because I really like Tony Storm. Yeah. Um, I'm, for me, I... am all about Hiroyo Matsumoto. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't have a huge problem with really her. Really dig her, and I kind of I hope she's a person that they eventually like bring in. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There, I, I think, I think, I definitely think what kept my attention on that match was Tony. But I mean, it was definitely. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't feel as let down as I did in the first round so they definitely upped it but still not at that level it was like I, yeah I, I, I really think, I think that those benefited uh, something that benefited that match is that because what she was uh, she beat she beat uh, MJ Jenkins yes going into the uh, advancing from the first round um, I think the thing that benefited and made this match a little better was that Tony Storm and Hiroyo Matsumoto have had prior matches against each other no, she beat Ra- Rachel Evers. Rachel Evers? Yeah. Whoever it was. Uh, no, Zeuxis beat MJ Jenkins. Uh, no, she beat Ariel Monroe. Who, who beat MJ Jenkins? Uh, MJ Jenkins in the tournament? Yeah, Rhea Ripley. Oh, okay. MJ Jenkins. Whoever it was. 
Uh, no, uh, Tony Storm and Hiroya Matsumoto have had prior matches against each other in stardom. Oh, okay. So, they have experience together, which I think kind of made them mesh a little better. Uh, like the same way that Tony Storm and Ginny meshed well together. You know, it does help. Yeah. That, you know, no matter how good you are, if you're going against somebody for the first time, it's probably not going to look as crisp against going against somebody you've had at least a, if not multiple matches against. Absolutely. All right, so talking about the quarterfinals, uh, let's talk about which matches we're looking forward to the most. we got Lacey Lane versus Miko Satomura. We have Tony Storm versus Mia Yim. Rhea Ripley versus Tegan Knox, And Io Shirai versus Deanna Perrazzo. Man, it's one of those things where when I looked at this bracket, I was like... One of these matches is not like the other, because Lazy Lane is gonna get murdered. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, only two of these, only two of these matches I'm looking looking at and going, these are gonna be amazing. One of which is not is probably Lacey Lane versus Miko, unless I'm I'm hoping that Lacey Lane. Is able to like come through and just look fucking phenomenal against Miko. She needs it to impress me. Yes, to be honest. Um, but since we already spoiled it, I'll, I'll try not to this time for reasons. I'm scared of Rhea Ripley versus Tegan Knox. So I'm gonna say that the match I'm looking forward to the most is definitely going to be Tony Storm versus Mia Yim. Yeah. Uh, that and Io Shirai versus Deanna Perrazzo. Well, I, I mean, just knowing how high <coughs> the audience has been on pretty much all eight oh, yeah. of these women. Absolutely. The crowd is going to be bananas. Yeah. And then... And the then, whole rest of the tournament. Yeah. And then to know that the semifinals are just after it and will include four of these eight women... It's it, the, our next review is going to be a lot of. I mean, we're we're gonna have a lot to talk about. Yeah, just because we're gonna know the finals. Yeah, going into the evolution pay per view. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I I I think those two matches specifically are going to be standouts. Yeah. Tony Storm, Mia Yim, Io versus Diana. Those are gonna be fantastic matches. I'm I'm curious to see the dichotomy between Rhea and Tegan. Because major size difference. Yeah, but I think Tegan might be the biggest, potentially the biggest uh, person that Ripley's gone against in the tournament. Ripley went against. Yeah, well, MJ Jenkins isn't small. I think MJ Jenkins might be a little taller than Maybe. Tegan, but she but she's de- the hair. But she's definitely slender. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess pound for pound. Yeah, I I think this might be pound for pound. Tegan Knox will probably this be might the, be the of most the, three. the closest e- to even match that Rhea has thus far in the tournament. Yeah. Which is you know cool, I guess. Yeah. It's not saying much because there's not a not a whole lot of not a whole lot of competition in the other two that she's faced. But uh, yeah, we'll 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 see how that well we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and I'm really interested, just looking at who is left, like, if you could pick, what would be your best case scenario for semifinals matches? Because, I mean, I've seen the spoilers, I know who goes to the finals, Yeah, I'm not going to say anything to you, but I want to know, to round out this video, give me what you think is going to happen Quarterfinals, semifinals, who do you think is going to face each other in the tournament? I'm going to say... In the finals at Evolution. Oh, man, you want me to go, go, all, the, all, go the all the way to the finals? Okay, semifinals, I'm saying... Tony versus Miko. Rhea versus Io. Potential finals, I'm going to say... Io versus Tony Storm. All right. That, that's that. I, I feel like Io Shirai, because of how big she was supposed to be last year... And you know now she's finally here. They want her to go do big things. Tony Storm, big fan favorite from the first one, has been just as hot this this round or this tournament as well. I, I and big name of the UK brand. Absolutely. So yeah, I think the two of them. I mean, any combination of these, all eight of well, Lacey Lane, if she comes to play, we have we have a very solid eight uh, going into the quarterfinals. So. 
Um, I'm really, I really wouldn't be disappointed with any combination. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say finals it's gonna be Tony Storm, Io Shirai at Evolution. All right. Uh, if I were booking, okay. So for if, okay, this is this is not saying that this has any detriment in what happens or what doesn't happen in the tournament. These are not spoilers. This is the way he not, would do not it. Not spoilers, and not me saying that this doesn't happen either. Yeah. Because this could be what happens. <laughs> he could uh, be totally agreeing. Uh, the match out of the eight that I would book personally myself, even away from this tournament, I want to see Rhea Ripley versus Miko Satomura. Ooh. Because I want to see... Because Rhea is... She's not a rookie anymore. She's got a couple years under her belt. Yeah. Uh, you know, a full year plus now for WWE. Uh, and then Miko, who's a total just absolute Veteran. legend. Ab- yeah, absolutely. Um, and I and they kind of have similar yet contrasting styles. Just that that no nonsense punch him in the face type of yeah type of feel. Like, yeah. Miko Satomura is like the end game, uh, Japanese Joshi Strong style, and then Rhea Ripley is kind of transforming herself into female Pete Dunne. Yes. Oh God, yeah, you're right. Holy shit. The, uh, seriously, watch all the facial expressions. It's, she they looks have like similar brothers. like shaped faces. They look too. like siblings. Oh god! Uh, just Pete Dunne got the short person genes in the family. You don't uh, give a fuck. No, uh, no. I I would love to see that match. Yeah, I'm down for it. Um, yeah, like I said, any combination. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm excited for Evolution. I'm excited for the third round and the semifinals of the Mae Young Classic, and we'll be talking about that in a couple weeks. When both the quarterfinals and semifinals are over, and then we'll be talking about evolution. So thank you guys for watching our round two review of the May Young Classic. Be sure to click all the links down below. Check out our other so pages. Many. You can check out the podcast. This won't be on it, but the other things might. All the be. other reviews go on the SoundCloud when it works. When it works. Uh, so yeah, check out all that stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>